Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about springtime perfumes. The day I'm filming this is February 20th and it is still very much snowy outside. But I understand that for a lot of other people in the world who don't live in the specific area of Canada where it seems to eternally be winter like me, the spring is coming for you guys. So I figured I would recommend, you know, not for myself but for other people who have the luxury of experiencing warmth, some warm fragrances for spring. I'm just kidding. <laughs> spring will come. Yesterday was family day here in Canada, a holiday, so I'm visiting my parents right now. Um, so I brought a few fragrances back here, kind of in anticipation that I would have to film a few videos. But that said, some of the fragrances, I will put up little photos from online. Hopefully that will suffice, but I do have some of the fragrances here in person. Hopefully this helps. I was severely overexposed, which made me a lot more pale than I usually am. So now you can see me a little better. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, and if you're watching now, follow my Instagram. And if you already follow my Instagram, you're cool. Let's get into it. I'm gonna start off with a very well-known fragrance that to me I always end up craving when the springtime comes. And this is Flower Bomb by Victor and Rolf. I have this little cute mini bottle that I've had since 2022. It has a good old dent in it. I think of this fragrance as like a romantic Valentine's Day fragrance. It is a nice floral scent with a bit of patchouli at the base. So it has that strength, it has the projection. It smells like a girl with like really pretty hair. When she turns her hair, you're like, oh. It's not floral in the traditional like pure bouquet of flowers scents because it is sweet. I don't know if there's a vanilla in it or something like that. And there's one of my favorite notes of all time, which is tea. I love tea and if you guys know, Taylor Swift used to wear this. This was her signature scent back when she was kind of in the early days. I think when she wrote the album Red, this is the perfume she wore at the time. At least that's what she told all the magazines. So if you want to touch your inner Taylor Swift, this is a good scent. This is tea, bergamot, a little bit of orchid. So I'd say it's just a nice well-rounded fragrance. You could wear it all year round, but I do think it works really well in the springtime. Next up, we're going to do a fragrance that I only have as a little mini travel size. This is another tea fragrance, but it's a little bit different. This is called Un Ete, which does mean a summer in French. This is by Obvious Parfum. This is a matcha tea fragrance. It is a very green, green scent with a little bit of a powderiness with also a freshness. You have vanilla, matcha tea, mate, a little bit of tonka bean. Really smells like white chocolate from the, the white chocolate on a green tea Kit Kat. I think it's white chocolate that's like dyed green and flavored like green tea, but that's what it smells like. It really smells like matcha and there's like a hint of a freshness. They use mandarin orange, which isn't as like abrasive or citrusy as a bergamot or a lemon. A little bit of ginger too. I like it, it's it's springy. To me, this is like spring is around the corner. Um, I would say it has a little bit more of a gourmand essence because it's tonka bean and vanilla, but it has all these kind of citrusy green, a hint powdery essences that to me make this like a spring gourmand. So if you're more of a sweet person, if you like matcha, this is probably the best, most matcha-y matcha I've ever smelled. Interesting, I got a lot of the mate, which to me smells like the powderiness of matcha. You know, I love matcha. I love like an iced matcha latte or any kind of, you know, like matcha flavored chocolate, Pocky, Kit Kat, any, any of that stuff. And I feel like a lot of people when they first get into matcha, there's the one thing that they don't really like, which is that like gritty powdery flavor that's a little green and earthy. And this has that from the mate, but to me, it's just as much as an iced matcha latte. It's there, it's in the background. It's, it's part of the core identity of the matcha accord, but it's not overpowering because there is that sweet vanilla. So I would kind of compare this to the equivalent of like an iced matcha latte. If you drink unsweetened matcha, I guess it's not super sweet. It's like just sweet enough. It's like an adult sweet, like a grown up being like, oh, this is sweet. And it's like 95% dark chocolate. And you're like, okay, sweet. Okay, sure. But yeah, see, so this is like almond mom sweet. But yeah, this is very pretty. And to me, it's like a springy scent. For those of you who like gourmands, Okay, next up we have a new launch. I have this in the travel size, but I have the full size and I haven't actually opened my full size yet. So I figured I kind of want to do a full video on Fleur sometime because I think I have all the Fleur perfumes except the new strawberry one. This is Fleur's father figure. And it's funny because I feel like this is one fragrance from Fleur that has really done well. A green fragrance, and usually I'm not a fig girl. If you know me, you know that me and fig, we don't really see eye to eye on most occasions. This is a powdery, woody scent with some iris, some orris. I'll have all the notes up so you can look at them. I find, I 
find it hard to describe this. I never actually posted a review of this on TikTok because I couldn't really find the words to articulate this fragrance to you guys. And here I am featuring it in a YouTube video where I'm required to speak even more at length. So we'll see if I end up making a coherent sentence about this. This is a fresh opening and it's a little weird. Like it's a little bizarre. I usually really like these like powdery woody scents. But I think the mixture of like water lily, which is a very wet, soapy, bubbly note mixed with these more dry notes like sandalwood and orris, it's it's a little weird. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, fresh but dry at the same time and green. And then there's vanilla in there. So it's, it's a really weird fragrance, but it's for spring. I know a lot of people who love this as their signature scent. They find this very sexy. They find this very like wearable. This is not my favorite fragrance. I really haven't worn it other than like videos I've filmed with it, but I know so many people love it that I wanted to include it in this video. And I do not, I don't think it's like a bad fragrance or anything. I just think it's, I just know that people really like it. So I wanted to include it in here, but it's not my personal favorite. Yeah, it's a really weird scent, but it's unique. And when I asked you guys what videos you wanted to see, you guys specifically said, new spring perfumes and this is a new spring perfume so i wanted to put this in it's not my favorite ever of all time but i believe in this fragrance and i do think a lot of you guys would like it so those are my thoughts okay next up we have a fragrance that i do not have here in person this is for those of you who like really fresh white clean scents and i'm actually going to do two recommendations in one neither of the fragrances i have here but they're both very similar scents except one of them is a very well-known french brand and the other one is an well american brand they only shipped to the us but they're vietnamese owned and they're both similar-ish fragrances that both of you would like if you like a musk fresh second skin scent that could be springy you could layer it with anything you put a floral scent on top but anyways this is kind of like a jack of all trades any scenario spring scent everyday scent that you can wear all year round but for spring it would be especially very nice this is le papier by diptyque which is the first niche fragrance um, i originally was thinking to put this fragrance in but there's a new fragrance that i just tried that i want to add in and i'll talk about next um le papier by diptyque is a musk fragrance there's a few different types of musk i think there's like mum mosa or something in here this is a fragrance that i talked about this in my last video but i pulled you guys on my instagram page asking you it was kind of a little bit of a market research i asked what are your favorite scents what are your favorite brands what's your favorite everyday perfume what's your most worn perfume and i went through thousands of answers one by one wrote down every single perfume that people responded and the most common everyday slash signature scent perfume was le papier by diptyque which is so funny because i've never talked about it on my page so i just think if i it interesting that so many of my followers love this perfume and I've never talked about it. So who did you find it out from? No, I'm just kidding. So I went to Paris and I went and smelled it at the Diptyque store and it was really funny because I posted a video smelling this on TikTok and all the comments were like, no, don't post about this perfume. Don't let people know. But I was kind of like, you guys, like, it seems like you guys already know. Like I haven't talked about it, but already the majority of you are wearing this perfume right now. I have pulled you and that is what you've said. So I'm sorry for spilling the beans in this video here, but I can't lie, it's a really good perfume. It almost smells white, a little creamy almost in that like creamy musky note. It's your skin but better. It feels like it enhances my skin and it's just smells very, very good. So this is a very good scent and I'm kind of losing words to describe it, but it's just simple, nice, easy, and you can layer it with anything. It's kind of like a body chemistry enhancer type of vibe and there's another fragrance that is very similar that i believe might be more affordable it is from a u.s brand named Danon. or i don't know if they're u.s but they only shipped to the u.s but they're a vietnamese brand inspired by vietnamese culture and they have a fragrance called white rice and this fragrance is so good it has orris it has rice tonka bean cedarwood and jasmine i mostly smell this like fluffy creamy musk with a hint of this savory rice note it adds this kind of powdery starchiness but on my skin it goes a little creamy it's just dreamy it is so dreamy and this perfume i'm getting as soon as they restock it because as i'm filming it today this is out of stock online hopefully it'll come back in stock soon but you can get it in their discovery set the enchanting vietnam set which is what i have at my home I didn't bring it back with me, unfortunately. This perfume is really good. I don't know how much it costs. I'm gonna put the uh, the difference of the Diptyque versus this one. They're not like dupes, but they're in the same family. If you're in the US and you have the privilege to purchase from Tanam, I love this brand and this scent is really, really, really good. And if you're international and you want to purchase from Diptyque, then Diptyque is really great too. Um, but I'll put the USD price difference here. So if you like the skin scents kind of vibe, clean girl aesthetic, 
all that yada 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 those two would be for you next up i'm gonna go more into this like aldehyde laundry like scent with a new business that i completely butchered on tiktok i filmed a review for this brand and it's so funny because i do research i do my research but sometimes i will think something is true and then i'll go back and be like where did i hear that from and it's like literally nowhere this is a brand called binoral who has a fragrance called incident light i saw this and i went okay indecent light and i made my whole review on tiktok saying indecent light tell me where it says indecent it most clearly says incident light and the brand binoral because it, it's a french sounding name i said it's a french brand it is not a french brand they're from new york this is an american brand i just want to apologize for the kind people who run this brand because i filmed a review i mispronounced the name and i also said that they were an american brand and that's just not true i'll be the first to own up to my mistakes and literally this video got like hundreds of thousands of views and not a single person in the comments corrected me so i'll be the first to call myself out anyways so this is owned by like a husband and a wife and i think i think they're a husband and a wife oh my god i might have messed it up but a couple i think they're a couple a, a man and a woman and the man is a graphic designer and he makes these bottles i think they are so cool and she does the perfumery they have a few different fragrances but the incident light is one that i really really like and it's one that my boyfriend fell in love with he came over to visit my family for christmas and i had shipped this to here knowing i was going to be at my family's house after christmas i didn't end up bringing this back with me and he was so pissed at me that i hadn't brought this back because he loved this my boyfriend just when he smelled this he was like this is this is it like this is my perfume and so when i got back home and he's like okay where's where's an incident light i was like i didn't bring it he was like he was mad so this is a clean fresh aldehydic scent it smells like going outside and just being like Opening your arms to the world has pink pepper, has aldehydes, grass, orange zest, this vetiver. So it's, it's all like very awakening, uplifting fragrances. This is something that's very bright and it would transition into the summertime really well. Super long lasting. It's very like, whoa, you know, I, I get a lot of grass when I still, when I smell it at first. Uh, it's such an interesting like bright juicy fragrance. I think it's so pretty. I think the bottle is really cool too I know a lot of people were like, oh, I think it's ugly But I don't know let me know what you think about these bottles because I've really never seen anything never seen anything like this before and I think it is quite interesting um, So if you like fresh bright and you like those aldehydes which have this kind of clean crisp folded white t-shirt Button-down kind of vibe. That's what that smells like this video is not in order But this next perfume is my favorite perfume for spring and summer. This is a perfume that I have made some very strongly worded posts about. Even though I don't have my bottle at my parents' house, even if I were back home with my perfume collection, I could not show you, well, I could show you my bottle, but it is completely empty. This perfume is, it was my gym perfume. It was my morning perfume. It gets me going. It is green. There's a little bit of grass, a little bit of fig, some bamboo, some tea, everything that I personally love. This is Bamboo Harmony by Killian. This fragrance is green. It smells like getting up in the morning, having serotonin levels naturally come to you that are at a normal expected amount. I'll try not to paint too avant-garde of a picture and kind of explain it to you in a way that you can imagine, but it's, it's green. It's a little citrusy. It's fresh, but then it has this fig note and I usually don't like fig. Okay, I'm reading from their website. The aroma of white tea spiked with citrus and green mimosa lift the opening of bergamot, bigorade, and neroli essences. Is, fig leaves on the dry down invite you to a calm meditative state lying on a bed of soft green moss ah, it can't be shipped to california interesting it is just divine this fragrance the first time i smelled it i was like whoa it was funny because i fell in love with moonlight in heaven which is a white rice mango it's almost this like aquatic mango sticky rice scent and i got the little like travel thing with a few of the small ones in this blue collection and i thought that i just wanted the moonlight in heaven but the only one that i used was bamboo harmony i fell in love and it's just everything to me and i really need a full size i'll be good this year santa moving along this is the first time i've ever talked about this perfume brand but i know they are all over tiktok and every other social media um this is future society i could give you a whole spiel about the purpose of this brand so they are synthetic biologists who sought to resurrect the smell of extinct 
flowers. So basically there's this building in Harvard that has a bunch of samples of extinct flowers and such and they can extract the DNA of these fragrances and then they can go through and see what protein through that they can try to guess what proteins are being produced, what the, the structure of these floral notes and such were. Then they can kind of mimic the notes by partnering with perfumers to resurrect these fragrances. And now these fragrances aren't made to smell just like the flowers. They're still perfume creations. They still have top notes, bottom notes, middle notes, base notes. But one of the notes in here is this accord of a de deceased flower or such. I cannot tell you what the flower is that was deceased in this one, but this is called Solar Canopy. If you liked Alina, you'd really like this. It has that kind of rhubarb lychee kind of smell. I'm actually wearing it right now. I think there's a little bit of mango or something kind of fruity in here too, which I really like, but it's not that like sunscreeny type of mango. It's fresh, it's springy, and there's a little bit of pink pepper in it too, which I like. Oh yeah, I didn't even realize there's a hint of pistachio in here. I don't smell any pistachio at all. It's mostly like a tangy floral sort of, but it's mostly like spicy and tangy. And then on the skin, it develops a little more interestingly. So I like this one. I think it's fun and it's good for spring. Okay, the final fragrance that I'm gonna discuss is one that used to be in the US market. This brand pulled out of the US market. So unfortunately we don't carry them anymore here in North America. But if you are in the Europe or in the Europe, you can get your hands on Atelier Cologne. This fragrance is called Clementine California. I love this. I got this back in 2021, which was the final year before they pulled out of the market. This is a really nice, fresh fragrance that just smells really good. I have a friend that collects huge, basically jugs of this fragrance because it's her signature scent. Orangey, clementine, mango, zesty fragrance. It's a little, almost smells a little aquatic, like the color of this bottle. It smells so good. I think this is their bestseller. Aromatic notes in here. So there's a hint of juniper berry, a bit of basil, cypress, vetiver, sandalwood. But honestly, I mostly just get like a fresh herbaceous, but kind of sweet scent that I really, really like. It's totally unisex. I just think it's so good for springtime. Um, Atelier Cologne was my first ever partnership. I started my page like December, 2020, and they partnered with me June, 2021. And it was so fun. They sent me all this stuff to make a little like picnic. And then immediately, like the next month, pulled out of the North American market so no one could get them anymore. So it was kind of funny. Shout out to Atelier Cologne. Yeah, I really like this one and I recommend you should try it if you can get your hands on it. So that wraps up my video. Let me know what you are going to be wearing for the springtime. Anything that I missed in this video that you wish I talked about. And let me know what you want to see in the next one. In the meantime, follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. Also, subscribe. If you are watching this, please subscribe. It encourages me to make more videos. I don't know what you want to see in the next video. I have a bunch of Arab perfumes that I got from Latafa. If you want to see a video on Latafa, I could do that. Whatever else you want to see, let me know in the comment section below. I hope you all have the most lovely day and I'll see you later. Thank you.